We're now on the 14th topic, called, this one's called uh, Machines and Computational Models. So first we're looking at what a virtual machine is, then we're looking at some computational models as they describe it. So the virtual machine, we can start by looking at. Um, so we kind of have to first talk about what a hardware machine is. So a hardware machine is just for physical components to make up a system. The next couple of topics are all about hardware. Um, and so we kind of need to compare this to what we mean by a virtual machine. So instead of just for physical components, we can think of a virtual machine as being a program with the same functionality of a physical component. So it's an emulation of a physical computer system, so the emulation of the hardware. So uh, the idea is that the user has the same experience using this virtual machine than if they were using the actual machine being emulated. So a common use of virtual machines is to run operating systems within another op operating system. So virtual machine is kind of a, the technology and one application is to do this. And so this is just an image uh, I found of, uh, this is called virtualiz uh, virtualizing software um, and it's just some software that performs this virtualization so um, creating this virtual machine and so what we're doing here the host uh, operating system is Windows XP you can see quite uh, obviously here and the guest operating system is the virtual machine and that is uh, Windows Vista and so why would someone want to run this virtual machine using a different operating system than their host operating system. There's a few reasons. Um, you might do this so uh, if you want to use an application not available on the host operating system. So in this example, um, Windows XP is quite old, and certain newer uh, applications wouldn't wouldn't work on Windows XP. So uh, they may work on Windows Vista, and so uh, the, the virtual machine is basically creating a whole new computer. Um, you can think of it as a whole new computer. In fact, let me bring up this. So this makes it slightly clearer. So this is our operating system. Actually, we're going to cover a lot of our operating systems in a future video uh, called software. But this is our host operating system in this example. So instead of using XP, we're using Windows 7 in this example. And we've got certain files, we've got certain drivers, and the actual hardware at the bottom. And so in this operating system, we are creating other virtual machines and they each have their own operating system and so we've got one running Windows XP, one with Windows 7 so just a, not a copy but using the same operating system as a host and you've also got a Linux one too and you can see each of them have their own um, files and settings and drivers so it, it's really trying to replicate another machine except the actual base hardware is the same so there's this level of abstraction from the hardware and we're, we're using the same hardware in reality but it looks like we're not. So, uh, so yeah, you can run maybe applications not available on the host operating system, and also, and quite a um, large reason why virtual machines are so good is that they can protect the host machine. So, security-wise, they're really good because really you're running the second operating system in what was known as a sandbox, and a sandbox is a security term, and really it means that you're separated from the rest of the machine. So these are separated this sort of yellowish square is trying to show this sandbox and the idea is that this is separated from this and so anything you're doing in this operating system so if one of these applications is dangerous if you're trying to test some virus using this operating system you want to see the effect it has on the files you can run this safely and it won't affect uh, the drivers and the files in your host operating system so there's this degree of separation and so uh, it makes it a lot safer using a virtual machine in this way. And, and just a third reason, which also has some security implications, is you can make copies of this very easily. So this might just be a copy of this host uh, operating system. This might be the virtual one, might be a copy. And it means that you can kind of uh, play around with it a bit. You might want to try and edit some files if you're testing the operating system. And you can do this without damaging your original uh, base uh, host operating system. Uh, so this is kind of the actual implementation of what a virtual machine is. It might be better to talk about it in terms of um, in terms of um, sort of the abstract concept. And uh, this comes down to what actually the function of an operating system is. Like I say, we're covering this in more detail in a future video. But part of the actual function of an operating system is to act as a virtual machine. The idea of a virtual machine is to hide the complexities beneath the layers. And this is to do with abstraction, which I'm trying to avoid talking about because it's not necessarily in a course, I'm trying not to introduce uh, new confusing terms, but um, 
a lot of it is about abstraction and actually this is talking about it in terms of the abstract concept and as I say this is more of the actual implementation of this technology and why you might want to do it. So like I say part of the function of an operating system is to present a interface to us very different to what is actually going on beneath the surface because there's very complex hardware I mean the levels of abstraction you have at the top just your screen and uh, the nice uh, user interface and then you have several layers um, just a code and then at the base binary and just electricity and so it's hiding this complexity from us that's part of the purpose of uh, an operating system and it's using this virtual machine idea so the next thing to look at is what, for example, describe as computational models. I should say that this has caused me a little bit of grief because it's difficult sometimes to work out what, for example, would want you to know. And this isn't the most obvious uh, point. In fact, the new LXL GCSE course is pretty much identical to this one, except they've got rid of this bit, suggesting that maybe they made a bit of a mistake. But that doesn't mean you can't be examined on it. So uh, just a bit of background. The computer science is really the science of computation. Uh, computation is kind of just for processing information and information is just data with context and when we're studying uh, theoretical computer science we study both what can be computed so what types of problems can we solve because not all problems can be solved and if we can actually solve them how can we do it and it's through algorithms so um, the theoretical computer science the theory of com computation is revolving around lots of different models and you need to know four and whether you'd call them models is what I was slightly confused about but so we're treating them more as uh, definitions about so the first three are sequential parallel and multi-agent so sequential algorithms or the model however they want to phrase it in the exam uh, like we looked at constructs uh, near the start of the course and like the sequence construct I mean sequential is just a version of sequence isn't it uh, these algorithms execute start to finish line by line so everything is executed uh, in order if that makes sense a parallel is what you would expect with a name so this is when an algorithm can be executed simultaneously on multiple processing devices and so um, each piece of the algorithm that each device processes can be and combined together to produce a final answer at the end so we're looking at processor um, the processor in the next video and you can have multi-core process processes which have um, so a four core processor would have these basically four multiple processing devices that's what I'm talking about and so if you use a parallel algorithm they could each be solving a bit of a problem and then it'll be combined at the end to produce a final sort of answer so that's what a parallel algorithm might be a multi-agent um, you usually talk about in terms of being a multi-agent system not so much an algorithm um, and it's mainly to do with artificial intelligence and maybe that's why whoever um, at edXL decided to drop this in but it's not really the time or the place perhaps but so we need to know about it. So when we talk about an agent, usually this is taken to be a program performing some small kind of background tasks. So usually kind, usually some kind of data collection. Um, that's usually the context agents use. But also agent could be like a robot, could be a human. If we've, I guess talking about human interaction. And so when we have a multi-agent system, so we have lots of these agents, each agent is acting independently and in a decentralized way. So it's not a central. Um, uh, central device controlling these agents they're meant to be acting independently doing their each specific tasks and so the uses of systems like this include artificial intelligence so I guess the idea is that in our human brains uh, there's loads of different agents Again, they're not programs in this case but um, they're performing lots of different tasks and so if we want to replicate that using a computer system we need to uh, use a system like this so I think that's what for example we are trying to get at so maybe independently and decentralized are the two buzzwords when we're talking about agents. And the final model is a little bit separate to this but um, it's called the input process output model and this is what the basic diagram looks like um, and it can describe a computer system so at the basic level this would be a good description of a computer system obviously hiding all the complexity. So um, often a, another stage is added so a storage stage because if we're processing something often we need to get data from a storage which is why we have these two arrows and we're often going to store stuff that's often part of the process to store uh, to store um, some data maybe temporarily and also this feedback loop that goes from output to input is uh, supposed to sort of uh, replicate any outputs going back into the uh, process again it could be the same process it might just be like a repeat or it might be if we're looking at a system as a whole just um, 
data being used for something else. Uh, so if you get asked, you could get asked maybe to draw this model. The basic one would just be input process output, but probably that won't get you many marks. Uh, the extra marks would maybe be from drawing the feedback loop and also this storage box too. Uh, you'd want to draw it just above, but I ran out of space a little bit. Uh, so that's it for this video. Hopefully it was useful. Next up, we're looking for processor, as I've talked about. So thank you for watching.